you mentioned like citizen science piece, right? So there are many, like there's quite a bit things the citizen scientists or garage uh, biotech can do, but there are regulatory concerns. Right? This industry is very regulated for obvious reasons, right? You don't want to create a new strain that can create a future pandemic. So those worries, I, I understand why those worries even exist. But I, at the same time, I'm super excited about the whole concept of garage biotech because biotech doesn't belong to few group of elite PhDs or well-funded biotech. Biotech belongs to everyone, right? I don't do programming, but I still use computer. I still use internet. So why can't we do the same thing with biotech? The only extra layer of complexity is regulatory, extra regulatory layer. So what are your thoughts about it? No, I, I mean, I totally agree. I, I see it the same way. I think it's it's really exciting development to see more people taking synthetic biology, bioengineering into their hands outside of academic spaces, because I think that diversity of perspectives, of experiences that goes in to this research and technology, that's what's going to really drive the innovation that solves real world problems. Because I mean, while academic research is great and scientists doing this work is super important, it's really a very different mindset when you're doing research for a scientific purpose versus you go into it with a problem that you recognize and you've experienced perhaps or people around you and you're you're on a mission to try to solve it that's that's really what's going to drive the the really interesting applications and but yeah at the same time i mean we need to have systems in place that can prevent misuse prevent you know acts unex, unforeseen negative consequences of these new innovations and it's it's going to be you know a bit of an arms race between the advances of the technology and the advances in biosafety and biosecurity precautions that are put in place the nice thing is that there's a big awareness in the community, including in community scientists, uh, sort of DIY citizen scientist spaces of the potential risks and, and you know hazards of this technology. And so everyone is cautious about trying to be proactive, trying to engage with ethicists and sociologists and people who can help to think about what are the societal, environmental, and human implications of this work. You know, you can't really go to a conference on synthetic biology without there being a section dedicated to those those kinds of ethical considerations. So it's really good to see that. And I think the only way we're going to be able to stay ahead of those concerns is with a lot of communication, a lot of public engagement to engage or to understand people's concerns, allow them to be part of the process. And, and we're going to need a lot of investment into things like, I guess, the equivalent of antivirus software for biology to be able to stamp out any potential misuses or, or harmful applications that may arise. Love it. So what, what type of hurdles you think we should focus on? So ethics is one piece to really empower citizen scientists. So if we have clear set of guidelines, I think citizen scientists have a starting point. Currently, someone working in the garage, there is in different like different countries it's really challenging to know exactly what they can even do so what what type of like so we, we definitely need clear guideline but also pro citizen scientists so we do want to encourage these tinkerers to come up with the next cure for cancer or to come up with a more i don't know economical way to produce fuel or more environmental friendly way to produce fuel or food so what type of things we can focus on on do to develop this bioeconomy because without uh, making it more uh, crowd powered uh, like more distributed i don't think we will have this true bio revolution this the promised land we all are talking about mm. I mean, I'm by no means an expert in any of that side of things, but I mean, I, I keep an eye on what's going on. And there's a lot of interesting work being done on things like alternate genetic codes to prevent, it, you know, genetic or genetically engineered organisms from spreading their genetic information into the wider ecosystem. There's things like kill switches and things to prevent organisms from surviving outside of their intended environments. There's security measures with companies that produce DNA synthesis that screens any orders to make sure that sequences being ordered aren't potentially dangerous. You even have people like George Church calling for a licensing process that has people become registered in, in some sort of system as a bioengineer so that there's a level of surveillance going on. I mean, whether or not that actually happens is, you know, to be determined. But I think that kind of stuff is what's probably going to be needed is a way to monitor what's being done, but at the same time, recognizing that it's going to be near impossible to monitor everything that's being done. Just thinking about how ubiquitous biology is, the raw materials are everywhere. 
So as long as the knowledge to use it is there, virtually anyone anywhere could be doing synthetic biology. So it's it's really going to be a matter of the safety innovation and security innovation staying well advanced and well ahead of the you know the broader use of the technology. There just needs to be constant investment and innovation going into new solutions that can prevent, you know, outbreaks or prevent any, any misuse. But at the same time, I think, you know, talking about this stuff is super important. And I think being cognizant of this is important, but it's, it's worth remembering that one, first of all, the people doing this stuff are aware of these concerns and the vast majority, and potentially I would say everyone doing this work right now is doing it with well, good intentions and doing it for good reasons. But secondly, the, the beneficial applications, I think, far outstrip the potential negative consequences. We need new solutions for disease. We need new ways to produce food sustainably. We need solutions for sequestering carbon dioxide and turning it into things that are more valuable rather than just burying it in the ground and hoping it turns to rock in the, you know thousands of years. We need these solutions to be created. So I don't think you know, slowing down the innovation or stopping it is the way to, to move forward. I think it's an awareness and understanding and a constant innovation to stay ahead of the, the risks. 